Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you the configuration of dot one q tunneling or something that is called q in q. And I'm going to show you everything in two different flavor. Uh, the first one is going to be when you configure a router and connect it to a switch. And on the other side, I have configured another router. And this is assuming that this router is going to act as a computer, most likely, not a router, actually. But anyway, assuming that this is connected to my switch, I'm going to show you the configuration. Uh, the next, which is more common and a little more complicated, not so much, of course, just a few more commands. That's going to be when you configure switch and you connect it to your network and then uh, you can configure a dot one q on this. You can see that I have multiple PCs here. I have used IOL routers to uh, run as PCs, so I'm going to show you and I'm going to tell you why. One reason that I have selected PCs as routers is when you go with virtual PC in EVNG or PNET lab environment, they do not really work and there is a problem with that. But I'm going to show you this here and then I'm going to show you a capture of what is happening in here. So let's just start from the very, very beginning. Uh, this is the environment that uh, belongs to the service provider. And in my service provider, I have multiple customers. On the left, you can see that I have two different customers. Let's assume that the top one is going to be customer blue. And customer blue has two different branches, one on the left and one on the right. And let's say that I have another customer, which I call it customer red, and it has a branch on the left and a branch on the right. And these two branches should have connectivity. Now, that one queue is not one of those very, very, very common solutions to work with. Uh, but it is one of the solutions that you can really use and it is going to be very, very versatile specifically because you can have something up to 4,000 or even more than that customers connected to your switches and then uh, you can have connectivity for them inside your network. Now, the configuration consists of multiple steps. Uh, inside the uh, service provider, everything is going to happen here as a matter of fact not uh, on customer side. Customer side configuration is almost nothing. Here, if I have a router, I have just configured a sub-interface here, and the sub-interface is configured with a specific VLAN, the VLAN uh, which I want to, you know, have on the other side. Uh, for this, as a matter of fact, the switch has a trunk interface, a normal trunk interface, as a matter of fact, nothing very special about this trunk interface. But the actual configuration goes on these interfaces, customer facing interfaces of the switches. So the inside interfaces of these routers are just trunk interfaces, but the customer facing interfaces are configured with that one Q tunneling configuration. Let me show you this. On top, I have Ethernet 00, which is connected to this customer that we call it blue. So if I just go to switch one and go to here, and I'm going to show you the running configuration of interface E00, like I said. This is the configuration that we have here. Uh, switch port access VLAN is 111. This VLAN does not have anything to do with the customer. As a matter of fact, customer does not even see this VLAN. And we have just configured this as an internal VLAN inside the service provider. I can have up to 4,000 something interface uh, VLAN inside my uh, provider network and I can assign one of these to any of the customers. Now that customer might have one or multiple VLANs. It doesn't really matter. What I'm going to is to receive the customer's packet. Let's say that the packet is this or let's say frame as a matter of fact not packet because we are talking about layer two. This packet has a header on top of that that says what VLAN this belongs to. But I don't really care about that. I'm just receiving this frame. And what I'm doing is I'm adding this tag on top of that. So this tag, of course, is an extra four bytes. So you need to be very careful about the amount of, uh, you know, uh, MTU inside your network, you're going to increase it by four bytes, of course, and I'm going to show you how. And this tag is going to go inside my network, 
until the end and when it is going to be handed to the customer i'm going to rip this tag off and then i'm going to give this to the customer now customer is going to check its own vlan header and it's going to forward it to the correct interfaces now what is important to know is we have this header and then we are going to have this extra header which we are going to add inside our network so we have two or even more of these tags inside our network so this is why we call it q in q because we have multiple that one q header and this is why we call it that one q tunnel now based on what you see here you can now understand that the switch port mode for this interface is not trunk is not access it is actually dot one q tunnel and this vlan here which we have assigned this is not for the customer this is uh, for the tag the tag that we are going to add on top of the frame that we receive from customer so what we see here as a matter of fact is going to be something like this i'm going to have uh this customer um frame here so let's go with that customer is going to receive uh, th this is for example a customer vlan let's say that i'm going to go with a little so customer vlan is here 10 and let's say here is 20 on the other side of course this is 10 and this is 20 now a customer is going to send a packet to the switch switch is going to receive this packet and it's going to add a header to that here the header says vlan 10 this is the, going to be forwarded to switch one switch one says that this belongs to let's say 111 or 112 or whatever it is it is going to add this tag on top of this so what we have here is this customer frame that we have it and then we have this extra tag of 111 on top of that this goes through the network. These are normal trunk interfaces, nothing fancy about them. And then it gets to here. And based on what we have here, we can easily understand which VLAN or which interface, of course, this frame belongs to. Let's say that this says 111. And we know that this one is 111, of course, uh, on here. So I'm going to rip this off and this frame is going to be sent to the switch switch is going to check its own tag and it will understand that the tag is uh, for vlan 10 and it is going to send it to pc3 the same thing of course happens here because the other one now has a sub interface let's say sub interface 0, 0 0.10 and we have just said that this interface belongs to let's say for example 110 we are going to receive a, a, a frame with a with a tag of 10 then we are going to add our own tag and then we are going to deliver it on the other side and rip the tag off and give it to the uh, customer so let's go to configuration one more time i'm going to check eternal 02 on switch one and you can see that it says uh the, the vlan tag that we are going to add is 111 and the switch port mode is dot one q tunnel this is of course for this interface 00, zero which is connected to r1 so on r1 what we have is this show run interface e00.10 so there is nothing special about that on the customer side customer says this is vlan 10 but what we are going to have is vlan 10 and then on top of that a tag of 111 what about the other interface which is connected to this switch here Again, the configuration for switch one is going to be exactly the same as what we have on zero zero with a change in the, uh, the, the access VLAN that we are assigning for that. So if I just go to switch one and say show run interface Ethernet zero two, this is exactly the same, just the customer VLAN that we have assigned to that. The tag that we are going to assign for this specific customer is going to be different so now you know the configuration of the switch here and here both of them are configured that does as dot one q tunnel and uh, one extra tag is going to be assigned for them so this is a normal tunnel interface a normal uh, trunk interface on the inside i'm going to capture everything so that you can see so i'm going to say i'm going to capture ethernet 01 which is the trunk inside here 
and for now there is nothing here and let's go to PC1 and ping PC3. On PC1, like I said, I have configured this as an IOL router. So show IP interface. Brip says that this has an IP address of 10.10.10.201. 10, 10, 10, uh, the other side is 10.10.10.203. 10, 10, 10, and this should say ping, not ping. And you can see that the ping goes through. Now if I go to here and check it, uh, unfortunately there is a problem with the capture that we have on PNET Lab environment. doesn't really show, but if we had this, you would have seen that uh, you would have seen that there is an extra uh, tag on top of that and, and the packet went through here to the other side. So Let's go with this. Let's see if I can capture, for example, E01. And I'm going to run this ping again. And you can see that this went through. And of course, it doesn't capture anything. And I believe that this is because of the bug that we have in here inside PNET Lab, which I'm trying to do. But anyway, you can see that the configuration works just fine. If I just go to PC2 and do the same thing on there. So if I just go to here and say ping 10, 10, 20, 204, which is PC4's IP address, you can see that this works just fine. For R1 and R2, of course, the same thing happens here. We have IP address of 10, 10, 10, 10. On R2, if I go and check this, so IP interface prep, we have 10, 10, 10, 11. But let's say that I'm trying to ping this and you can see that the ping goes through as well without any problem. So this is the configuration of dot one q And like I said, the only actual configuration that we have happens on this part and on this part. And later I'm going to show you the same configuration on a mix of Juniper switches and Cisco switches in another video, of course. So stay tuned and uh, subscribe my channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up and also hit that notification bell so that you can know whenever I uh, upload a new video.